Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pies Nation podcast, where the pies are hot and the drinks are cold. I'm Nicholas Sacco, your host for this week's episode, episode 30 of season five or episode 143, if you're counting from the beginning. I think this is the first season we've actually gone 30 plus episodes. And you know why? Because we're in a grand (laughs) final. That's why it's grand final week. The Mighty Pies are playing a part in it. And we are so excited after our thrilling one point win over the Giants on Friday night. So many highlights. Highs and lows experience, but we did enough to earn a shot at securing our 16th flag. Today, we chat a lot about what took place on Friday, including a nice Ask Pies Nation segment where we grab the emotions of our fans from the final siren, speak to our next guest, the crowd competition winner, talk AFLW, and see if our main man, Nick Dacos, can win the Brownlow medal tonight as we are about to go to air. And it's a full studio to help us with the preliminary final celebrations. Jack, Luke, and Marcus, boys. Welcome. I don't think you can wipe the smiles off any of our faces right now. We're just so up and about and we're in the, we're in the big dance, boys. Unbelievable, Nico. I think a first for the podcast yes. indeed. So yes, to finally. all be here and joining, joining with you. I know we don't actually play for the Collingwood <laughs> Football Club, boys, but sometimes it feels like it and none more so than right now. What a finals campaign it has been to fall on the other side of history after... Only a one-point loss last year, Lukey. It is a fabulous time to be a magpie. I've never been happier. <laughs> that was as good a win as you'll ever go to or see as a Collingwood supporter. And we're not done yet, but we have to just savour and enjoy what a night Friday night was mm. um, when that final siren went on. It was as torturous of a game to go through, knowing the consequences of a loss, um, but the other side of it, how good a win would be and uh, propel us to, I can't even believe you're saying it, like a 16th premiership Mm. and to potentially have that on Saturdays. uh, Just, oh my Mm. God, I can't believe it. What about you, Jack? Are you happy? Yeah, well, Marcus (laughs) just touched on it there, Luke. I think my mind goes immediately back to what I was doing after losing a prelim Mm. uh, by a point to Sydney, going up there by myself and having not a lot of mates. We were were both there. um, (laughs) After the loss, we sort of just dissipated away from each other and just, yeah, wandering around there, just not knowing what to do. And then, yeah, flash forward to a year later and we've won one by a point against the other Sydney mob um, with all their fake supporters, Nico. That was (laughs) a great, fun experience for me on the night. But, (laughs) no, it was... um, yeah, just an unbelievable night at the footy. Um, these games and these experiences are the reasons why we, we go week in, week out. Um, so grateful to be able to share these experiences with um, some close friends and my partner Chantal. It was just, yeah, it was unbelievable. So, yeah, I'm running out of words because it was just <laughs> unbelievable. And, yeah, the ground was shaking when that siren went. So we'll get the emotions of our fans shortly on Ask Pies Nation, but I want to get your thoughts on, on the final siren on Friday night and just the scenes that followed afterwards because stoppage after stoppage in that last minute, we didn't know which way that clearance was going to go and as soon as it was pushed towards the wing and Dacos had the ball in hand, we knew that it was pretty much secured from there. So what was that final sign like for you, Marcus? Yeah, it was it was far too late is my initial <laughs> reaction. <laughs> yeah. um, that was, like, I can't remember going to a game of footy or even watching a game of footy that was so high stakes where there wasn't a winning score kicked, if you know what I mean, in the last few mm. minutes is often, that's how we lost the the prelim, uh, sorry, the qualifying final mm. to Geelong and obviously against the Swannies, they just held on, but we were coming hard at the end, but there was just no score. It was such a, as you use the word treacherous or something like those lines, like that's exactly what it was. It was painstaking. So look, when that final siren went, um, just, yeah, people crying, hugging each other, you know, randoms all just getting around one another. It is an experience and a half, mm-hmm. not just a game of footy. And so to be there and bear witness to it was truly special. Never, ever forget it. Lukey. Yeah, I was on the, I was tears one way or the other. Yeah. I was either crying out of sadness and heartbreak or uh, in the end, I was crying out of happiness and joy and like I've did. I said to you boys before we started the episode, I've probably never had a bet, better five minutes post a win um, for a Collingwood game in my life. Um, that was as good as you'll get. I just save it in every moment of mm. the song, singing it as loud as I can with my mates and um, all the Collingwood supporters around. And just jump, yeah, like you said, jumping on randoms and um, yeah, had a had a big night to celebrate <laughs> and enjoy it. Um, but yeah, understanding and knowing that there is still one more to go, Jack. Um, yep. But We have to, you enjoy these wins because you don't win a prelim all the time. And like 
we just mentioned we were there last year and like I've that I've never had a bigger heartbreak probably than mm. that prelim last year. So we got to enjoy these. Yeah, absolutely. Probably echoing the statements of the two boys there, Nico. I think just from an emotional standpoint, I was asked not that long ago in a uni class, actually exactly last year when we were playing Carlton, it was a class around, I'm doing a teaching course, it was a class around unpacking students and it was very philosophical, asking the why <laughs> of the why. And the teacher asked me, because we were talking, I remember everyone was burning through their laptops talking about ladder predictors and where who could finish where and whatnot and I was one of the loudest voices in that room and he pulled me up middle of the class and said Jack why why do you why do you like footy so much why do you go every week and why do you do that and my initial reaction was oh you know it's the joy of having something to escape to going and going to that and the joy of the Collingwood crowd and all this and he without saying it, he sort of said bullshit I don't but I don't believe it. there's got to be something else there and I was a bit miffed by this and I'm not really, really good at hiding my emotions, so I just sort of got a bit grumpy about it and <laughs> carried on the class. And he pulled me up as I was walking out of the class and said, this was before the Carlton game, before Jamie Elliott um, did what he did. And I was actually going to that game by myself. And he pulled me aside and said, this week when you're there, and I know you're going to get lost in the hysteria of it all, but try and unpack why why you love footy so much. And it was interesting because I was there by myself and the siren goes and you are – engrossed by these people that you have no idea who they are they are hugging you you've got tears streaming down your face and really when you come down to it you are just there to watch you know 48 or 44 blokes run around chasing a bit of um kangaroo or pink skin whatever the bloody hell it is in short shorts and a singlet um but the amazing driver of emotion that sport and afl footy can be for all of us, it's huge. And then that that experience allowed me to reflect more on experiences that I have with family and friends and loved ones. And, and to be there at the prelim this week with my partner, um, my mate's dad and um, my mate mum and, and my mate Liam, it was just emotion. It was so emotional. And I'd actually mm. resigned myself to the fact that we we're probably going to get beaten because mm. when Jesse Hogan kicked the goal, we had six minutes to go and to hang on from there was mm. just an unbelievable effort. But then when the ball gets kicked out to Dakes on the wing and he kicks it to Hoskin Alley and the, the whole crowd knows it's home. It, I just, the emotional is the only word I have for it. The tears start coming. It's the reason why we go to the football. Um, and that in there, I think was my answer that I have for my, um, <laughs> for my lecture is that not necessarily the crowd and not necessarily, um, the, you know, having something to escape to, but this, cause I'm not a very affectionate bloke. So to get these significant emotions and out and experiences out and all due to a game of football, I mm. think is pretty powerful. Um, while we go to the footy every week and we got the clearest and most purest example of mm. that, I think, on Friday night. Well said. Oh, I could not have said that any better myself. That, hopefully. Well, that was one beautiful. More. And I hope your lecture is listening. listening. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was actually <laughs> turned out to be one of the probably most valuable uni classes I've had. Albeit <laughs> it was a bit of a carry on, but yeah, yeah. when you ask the why of the why, yeah, you can go mm. pretty deep in it. But no, yeah, there you go. Duke's I'll... diaries. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. That's, yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. I, I just stood there in disbelief, really. I was staring into blank space, couldn't believe what had just happened and took me a very long time to come to terms with the fact that we, yes, we had won and mm. we're actually playing in a grand final. We're a little emotional as well, mm. that's for sure. But um, you're right, one more to go. One more to go and we'll get to that because we're going to have a massive grand final preview episode. I don't know if, you, don't know if you've seen Pendles in the rooms after the game, but mm. when they're doing their little team meeting in. Craig McRae asked, mm. Pendles, do you have any, like, ex like based on your experience, you've been here, been here before? And he just sits there and he says, one more to go. And Nick Dacos is doing that as well. And as he was walking around the boundary, he's high-fiving everyone. And, he, boundary, boundary, everyone's, everyone's and he, it just that, just that little thing, he could have gone on and had a couple minutes speech, but he just said one more to go. And I think it's just reassuring to everyone that he knows he's been there before. He's been through the draw as well. Um, and he knows, like, we can enjoy this, mm. but there is still one more to go. So it's not done yet. Well, let's get then to the pie that caught your eye. And I'm sure there were all 22 players <laughs> at one point that were catching our eyes, even 23 uh, but who did we decide to lean towards, Jack? We'll start with you. I've gone Jack Crisp this week mm. for the pilot caught my eye. Had 19 touches and the early goal as well, which is absolutely huge. Also finished with a very impressive 541 metres gain. Look, a really solid showing from Crispy um, throughout the night. But the reason why he caught me eye is I thought he actually 
was performing at his best when the game was well within GWS's grasp. And I mm. thought he was still continuing to try and break lines, to try and get the ball going mm. our way um, when, yeah, all seemed lost. And that's the reason why I think a game like Crispy's um, in such a close game is so important because there's a sense of it that you feel like he's kept our head above water. And then when, not that he, ever, anyone, everyone was quiet at that stage, but then when a Jordan Degoe really starts getting into his work and a Nick Dacos really starts getting his hands on the ball, it's, it's it's all due to the Jack Chris being able to, you know, still continue to take the game on um, and keep us in it um, is really important. So, yeah, he was the pilot Conway this week. He's had some fantastic finals for us mm. since he's joined the club. And that was another one as yeah. well on Friday night. He's, he's running up and down. was exceptional. His work rate was brilliant. And, yeah, 19 touches might not seem like enough, but every single one of I feel like he's been a lot more efficient with his ball use as mm. well, particularly over the last few weeks. So great to see that from Crispy. What about you, Lukey? Uh, Jordan Dego is the yeah. pilot caught my eye. I think this was the best game of his career. Um, he was absolutely exceptional. 34 disposals, 17 kicks, 17 handballs, 6 marks, 13 clearances. Um, Which and, is a career high. And just, yeah, just watching uh, the highlights and a bit of the replay over the weekend, they just couldn't tackle him. He was breaking three, four tackles, fend, fend, and then able to give the hands off into space um, to a Chris Buer or a Nick Dacos or a runner, Quainall. Um, so it was just an exceptional performance from uh, Jordan Degoe. And it's the kind of game where we've always looked at and gone, this is what he can get to. This mm. is this is why we love him so much because it's what we think he can get to. And I think he, not that he hasn't delivered to this point, but this is his peak right now. It's what we've wanted to see for so long. Exactly. And yep. if he can go, and he's had, a, he's had an exceptional season, but if he can go on and do this again on grand final day, and help deliver us that 16th premiership, then, well, he's he's repaid the faith big time. So um, shout out to Geordie, and, yeah, one more for him to, to go. Nice little one-year anniversary for Geordie for when he chose to sign on as well. I think <laughs> yes. it was about this time last year yeah. or thereabouts. Pie that caught my eye this week was Mason Cox. Mm. The reason game. he caught my eye is because I genuinely didn't think he had the trip from that set shot yeah. in the last term. Mm. And the fact that he kicked it uh, was just mm. unbelievable. And you know, that ended up being the match winner. That was that, that's exactly why it caught my eye, because yeah. Mason Cox sinking the winner with about 12 minutes to go is not exactly <laughs> how... And going straight up. <laughs> ...footy games finish, period, <laughs> let alone in a prelim He's final. He's changed the way the game's played. Uh, look, oh, but to, to, I mean, to, to uh, the point with Geordie and even Crispy, Mason Cox is putting together a very nice career Mm. come post home and away season. Mm. Um, he, he is a big game player and I don't know if it's because the family was out or, or what it was, but he, he'll be remembered for that goal, gents, but it was just as much his presence in the middle from the get-go as well. He's really acutely aware of his status in the team and needing to show up contest after contest and being really aggressive from the start. It's what caught Max Gorn off guard at, mm. against the Melbourne squad a couple of weeks ago and I think he carried that forward into this match as well. I'm absolutely fascinated to have a bit more of a yarn later in the week, potentially, about where he goes across the f field. Because I think with some for some ob obvious reasons, he might have to provide a bit more supply. But his presence at the centre, um, clearances, allowing guys like Jordy to go to go to work was second to none. And uh, it's just, it, it's there's one more game for the, I think, yeah. first American potential premiership yeah. player right. Nico second, so what a sorry second crack at it second crack at it yeah but what a story that would be as well unbelievable that would be um yeah a few options for the pie that caught my eye but I went with a man who I felt like if he didn't perform the way he did we wouldn't have won the game and it was Tom mm. Mitchell with no Taylor mm. Adams in this side someone had to go in and do that grunt work and I know that uh, Titch has had some quiet games throughout the year and there was questions about his side, um, his spot in the side and what that was going to look like. But he delivered big time, especially in that last quarter. I felt like he was everywhere. He was in the clinches, getting that ball out, handing it off to the likes of the goalie and Crisp and allowing us to drive the ball forward. He finished with 24 disposals, but he had 10 tackles and 25 pressure acts. Mm. And for me, in a, in a tight, contested situation, it's the way the Giants like to play. He stood up to the task brilliantly mm. and... For me, it was without Adams in that team, especially if uh, Mitchell wasn't delivering in the midfield like he was, it would have been a very tough game to win. So, applaud Tom Mitchell. Glad we could see a performance like that from him. Also, had 12 contested possessions and four clearances just to add to uh, his great night and the grand final experience under his belt as well. Mm. Hopefully, he can help deliver us. And, and if Adams doesn't play or doesn't get up again on Saturday, fingers crossed that Mitchell can have a pretty similar performance. Mm. 
Due no the doubt. game felt like it was missing a Taylor Adams at stage oh, there. Yeah. Especially in that second quarter when the Giants were starting to get on top in the middle. We just you know, needed him to be there to putting his head over the footy. And, you know, hopefully for Tay's sake, he can mm. find a way back into this side. I don't even want to begin to start talking about selection no. dramas and, and how that might all look. But, yeah, yeah hopefully... Um, he'll be will be a better side with Taylor in it, I think. So, mm. side note, we will have a Thursday episode as well, talking about the, the selection as it comes to air. Mm. We'll be able to chat about it and, of course, previewing what's going to come with the lines as well. So, don't worry. We'll have lots of previews for you later on in the week. But back to Friday night. So, how do you think we pulled it off? What, what were we able to do right in that second half to, to turn it around? Because at halftime, I was saying to these boys off there, I was pretty scathing to some of my mm. mates about how disgraceful we were looking and how why were we putting up such a putrid performance because to me it felt like after a really promising first 20 minutes of the game we mm. just sort of stopped we didn't you know want to continue playing that corridor and um, going about it like we usually have and it allowed GWS to slowly get back into the game and build a pretty substantial lead in, in that type of match as well which really got us all worried and then the Giants hit the first goal of the third term and there were even more doubts being cast in our minds and 2019 just keeps getting brought up, of course. But what what do you feel like was the catalyst of turning the ship around? Because as we said, it was pretty dire at stages. But as soon as we got that first couple, uh, first those first couple of goals, uh, things seemed to change pretty quickly. Yeah, I think clearly the message um, came at halftime to flip the game on its head in the Collingwood way that um, we've known for the past 12 to 18 months. And obviously they got the start in that second half, but um, slowly, slowly we were able to start to see the Collingwood game come through again and um, able to put some pace on the ball and guys like Crispy and um, the runners in our side getting um, first use and getting the ball down into our forward line um, and able to, yeah, just take our opportunities. But yeah, I think it was just getting that pace on the game again. And then in the last quarter, it was flipping it back the other way and almost trying to just hold on and save the game at that point. Um, and a credit to this team, they've been able to do that multiple times throughout the year, is flip sort of statuses on the game and understand the situation in that, all right, now's the time to go fast and go hard, mm. um, potentially risk a few scores, but we're going to score um, ourselves. And then knowing in a low-scoring game, we've got this lead now, it's time we need to shut this game down. And obviously it got to a real dire point in that last quarter, but able to, like you said, Marcus, that goal come with 12 minutes to go and um, able to really just shut that game down. Um, I think it was the last eight minutes. It was no score at all. Yep. So um, <laughs> there needs to be a documentary made on how we've been able to win games by completely just shutting the thing down. That last eight minutes. You yeah. go back and watch that. No team does a better loop. You go back yeah. and watch that. Um, oh, it it you're as tense and as stressed watching the replay, even though you know what happens, because there's so many times when it looked like a little handball is about to come out, a tap on, GWS about to go, and then bang, Murphy's there, bang, Tom Mitchell's there. Um, just they're laying tackles, smothers. I know that. Toby Green shot when he had the banana from the pocket. But, How worried were we then? But that we Murphy, that Murphy spoil mm. just before that, absolute goal saver because that was a mark. I th might have been Hogan. I'm not sure on the forward that was going to mark that. Murphy absolutely just saved the day there. Unfortunately, Toby Green was right there and has the shot. Um, but thankfully, Sybottom was there on the goal line. But yeah, just a monumental effort. And I honestly, it's just, I don't think anyone puts in as much as these Collingwood boys. No one wants it more. And that's the difference at the moment. Yeah, I'm not sure what ignited us in the third term other than going back to playing our brand of footy. It's been spoken about in the press conferences and in the media since the, since the match wound up. But it goes to show whenever we are playing our way across the better part of four quarters, we continue to score. And I mm. think we have gone into our shells throughout the year unfortunately for patches of games and it's let the other team back in and then it becomes a much narrower affair than we would like but to our credit we seem to find a way more often than not when it is close and we're so well drilled when it comes to doing things like just tackling it was almost like a game of rugby for the last five minutes blokes just jumping on each other and thank god the whistle had gone away <laughs> in a prelim final because any other game of the year there would have been about 13 free kicks distributed i reckon um so i can't put my finger on it nico but all i hope is that going into this game this week we just play our way it's going to be a fast deck mm. on saturday with the weather and yep. 
that suits us very nicely, Jacko. Yeah, absolutely. I think this comes down to what Fly McRae has been preaching all year and managing the moments, managing the minutes. And I think what sticks in my head the most is we took our opportunities when we got them in the third quarter. And that's exactly what we needed to do. I might have the, the Markov leaving his man um, oh, was able to pick the ball up and then hit a damn McStay and gee, my heart goes out to him because he's playing mm. the best footy um, he has all year in black and white. Um, been really valuable for us across the two finals. And he was the one who went back at a really crucial moment in the game from 45 and just nailed it. Jamie Elliott as well got his opportunity. You know, didn't have a brilliant game, but when the opportunity came, they um, came up and stepped to the floor. And in a one-point ball game, all these things, they make a hell of a lot of difference. And that third quarter, similar to that Melbourne game, really, when mm. the Demons were coming hard and they were getting goals on the board, we were able to answer every single time. Mm. It, it felt very similar too because you miss a couple of those shots and you go down at three-quarter time still. Mm. There's still yeah, a lot of that doubt cast on your mind. Just on McStay, you're right. Shout out to him. We hope he's nice. going okay. It's brutal. It's mm. brutal. And he's so important to us. He, he hasn't set a game apart just yet, and that's what I've been waiting for. But um, his work in both the finals especially has been monumental. Um, has set up a lot of our scores, um, has set up a lot of our moves forward. But, mm. yeah, I thought um, his performance on Friday until he um, went off injured was one of his better games for the yeah. club. And, um yeah, kicking an important third quarter goal. And um, yeah, I think it's going to hurt us a lot on Saturday not to have him. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, we'll get to, to that on Thursday. Yeah, That's cover sure. that up, but yeah. Of course, as soon as we get a key forward in and they're going okay, has to get injured before we make a grand final. It's, just, it's like ironic. Or, yeah, typical. Yeah. Um, speaking of matchups, what do we think of the Maynard Green scenario? I thought Maynard can hold his head up high. I think it was pretty solid throughout stages of the game. Don't get me wrong, Green had his measure at times, and I think defensively... Maynard did struggle, left him a lot of space, which allowed Green to, to do his work and still get on the scoreboard. But 18 disposals at 100% efficiency, five tackles and 12 kicks with five marks. I think it's a pretty solid game in my book, Marcus. Yeah, he held his own. There's no mm. doubt Toby Green. I think from their first 10 scores, Toby Green might have been involved in six or seven of them. Like He is the captain of the All-Australian mm. team for a reason. And I think compared to 2019, obviously both players have gone to another level since then, but Toby Green is really one of the most special players in the comp. So the fact that Bruzzy was able to keep him to the two goals, and, and yes, Toby Green was very creative in the first half, but he did have limited opportunities in the second half, and I think Bruzzy probably got the edge on him mm. in the second half as well. So it was the matchup everyone was hoping for. Probably didn't have like those one-on-one -on -one battles that we might have loved as the footy fans, even as the mutual supporters, but... At the same time, um, I think Bruz will go into the grand final with a world of confidence. Yeah, you agree? Yep, absolutely. Yep, fair absolutely. enough, Luke. Yep, yep. yep. Cool, easy. All right, we'll move <laughs> on from that very quickly. Um, Jeremy Howe was also pretty special in the back line, I felt like. Finished with 10 marks, which was a game high. And I don't know, for me, he just, just reads the play so well coming in. He always gets into the right spots and is able to have an impact. Um, whether it is deep in defensive 50 or on the half back line, I think he was superb. So... If there's a forward line option for him because of that performance, I don't know. We're not getting into that right now. <laughs> um, but it's good to have that flexibility a bit with, with Howe's work. Well, I think it's his best game for the year, no doubt. I mean, obviously, he's missed a lot of it through injury. But, you know, since coming back from that, that is, yeah, as good a Jeremy Howe performance off the back line as you're going to see. And what was most impressive was his kicking, I thought. You know, too often you've seen Jeremy Howe this year, whether, again, it could be because of his injury, just take the short sort of stabby 15-meter kick and, you know, sort of let the next bloke do it. It. There was he was the one taking the game on for us off half back, um, especially in that third quarter. So yeah, a monumental game from Howie, and hopefully he can back it up. I I I think speaking to a few Collingwood mates today, I think sort of resigning to the fact that I'd rather go him go into a game as a back and be able to swing him forward if we need him, as opposed to starting him as a forward. Mm -hmm. Um, and then having to put him back if we need him. Yeah, I think it just offers a bit of flexibility to potentially do that, but not sort of showing your hand straight away. Um, but it was a type of performance from Howie that um, has been question marks over his spot in the side across mm. this season. So I think it was a type of performance that um, shows why he's in there. Um, and when it comes to big finals games, his experience uh, comes to the fore. Yeah, good luck, Fly, working that one out, that's <laughs> for sure. Uh, some of the biggest cheers on the night certainly came for Nick Dacos and his return to the MCG and ended up having another outstanding performance. 28 disposals, uh, four marks, four tackles, 520 metres gained along with six clearances and five inside 50s. Wasn't as efficient as we usually come to expect and 
Um, I felt like at times that sort of led to opportunities for GW West. Nonetheless, I felt like every time he got the ball, apart from the, the cheers, it was like a sigh of relief when such a heavy, fast game. As soon as you're oh, like, oh, okay, he's got the ball. It's all right. He'll know what to do from here. And look, more often than not, it worked out okay. So um, it was just, yeah, such a relief to see him back out on the deck and gets to play his first grand final in a few days' time. How good? Mm, yeah, the joint almost erupted when he kicked that check side on the run. Oh, yeah. It was oh, that so was close going, going into the <laughs> Collingwood Cheer squad. I thought that if there's a momentum catalyst in this yeah. match, it's that moment right there and, and, he, and he slots it if he hasn't missed the previous six weeks of footy. So to have him back on the ground, absolutely relief is a, is a feeling that comes through Nico. And as for his game, he had limited minutes in the first half by design and then worked into the match through the midfield. And I thought that for so, someone who's so young and, and, and has missed so much footy in recent weeks, it was incredible that he was able to see out the match the way that he did. And, what do you boys think? He's put on a little bit of size. I thought he was shaking tackles and just looked a bit more confident around the around the contest. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure if that's been a, a benefit to him since he's had limited running only to the last couple of weeks. Mm. But yeah, to come back and have that sort of impact is really incredible with 80% game time. Yeah, I did notice that as well. And I don't know if it's a bit of, I guess, intimidation that it's Nick and he he's just got those moves in tight, but it feels like he's been able to add that to his game a little um, more as he develops, um, just the in tight. Um, and, it, and he's always copped it for not, sort of taking the hits and going in for the hard ones, but it's because he's able to evade out of them that he's mm. not there taking the hits. He's off into space. And I thought he did that wonderfully a few times. And it's like watching Pendlebury um, go to work, but Dakes just has a bit more pace and he's able to get clear of the contest and then uh, nail a kick. So, now nah, he it was great to see him back. And to have 28 disposals in his first game back in a prelim final is... Yeah. Incredible. Honestly, it's incredible, but we look at it, oh, it's Nick Dacos, why didn't he have 40, you know? So, but I just thought, yeah, limited game time, like you said, in the first half, Marcus, and he st he come on and he started in the forward line, and it's not where he normally plays, so a bit of a different role to start off with, and it just felt like, yeah, by design, they slowly worked him into the game and got his hand on the footy, and um, yeah, just went to work in that second half and was key for us to get in the win. Absolutely. Cannot believe that goal didn't go through, Nico. <laughs> I was right behind it, and I thought it had, and I was carrying on like, I did. I get at least one once a week that happens to me. I <laughs> celebrate a goal that's not actually a goal, but oh, yeah. it was yeah. As you, the boys just touched on, to come back and have that sort of performance in a prelim final after mm. spending so much time off with the in the nature of the, his injury as well. That's also a significant factor. You know, it's, he's coming off an, a, a knee, a leg, um, so not easy to rehabilitate. Um, and then to be back in the hottest environment of a, a one-point prelim final. Hats off to him and yep. cheer. I hope he can perform on the big stage oh, this week. I can't wait. No, he's built for it. I reckon it, we're really excited to see what he can do. Um, any other notes from the game on Friday night? Got to give some credit to GWS. I thought they were exceptional. Yep. Uh, played some brilliant football and thoroughly deserved to be in the hunt right until the end as well. And look, I know if for, for the four Giants fans there, they would have been stiff that they didn't end up getting the win, that's for sure. But uh, they're going to hold their heads up high and they're going to contend for a few years with that list. Yeah, Collingwood podcast, obviously, we're just basking in the glory of, of what occurred. But I've got to be honest with you, I think that they were so close to pinching this from us that the the... The result is just as close as it gets. I know I'm stating the obvious, but the way that they played, again, like that is as hostile sporting environment as you could probably get in any code across mm. the world coming yeah. into 95,000 Collingwood yeah. supporters. Uh, mm. I reckon the, the chant went up about 10, 12, 12 <laughs> times in the game and it was there to psych them out. It was, the, But they just they must be used to it or something mm. by now. Mm. And the way they absorbed it, they've got so many weapons across the ground and they will absolutely be competing deep yep. into September next year because yep. their list is, is well and truly primed for more success. So hats off to the Giants. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any other thoughts? No, I was just going to mention on that Collingwood chant. I, what I love is how it's just a part of throughout the game now. It's not just, oh, At the end we've won we the game because yeah. we never, ever truly get to enjoy it because... You're never truly home until the song kind of goes. But now it's it's it is used as an intimidation kind of factor and get the boys up. And when when we are down on the deck and we just need a bit of a lift and um, we get a bit of momentum our way and then all of a sudden the Collingwood chant goes up and then we get a goal and then it's back in the middle and the stadium erupts and then we go bang, bang, bang. Um, and it's happened so many times throughout this year and it happened on Friday night again. So I just love that 
it, that's what it's become. And the boys thrive on it. The coaches thrive on it. They're encouraging mm. it. And it's why this Collingwood Army is as big as it is now because we as fans are super appreciated and uh yeah, I just love it at the moment. We are so lucky at the moment, I yeah. think. And so many other clubs watching. You know, shout out to Melbourne, who can't get more than 30,000 people there um, any, in, on, in big games. So they'd just be looking at that and going how envious and how they wish they could do that. Um, um, Carlton's not capable of that. Essendon's not <laughs> capable of that. Oh, so uh, just, yeah, super, oh, yeah. super proud to be a Collingwood supporter at the moment. Um, and, yeah, anything else from the game? I think just wanted to give a quick shout out to Lockie Keefe, I think. He's the journey, missing. the journey. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you for that. But the journey he's been on since, you know, the whole scandal he went through with, with us and then to sort of reinvent himself as a footballer. He's coming to the twilight end of his career and he's, I think he's probably in career best form almost. So shout out to a former Pie and Lockie Key for, uh, yeah, resurrecting himself. All right, let's get on to the votes then from Friday and I who we lean towards for our three, two, ones. Jack, we'll start with you. I gave one to Jeremy Howe. Again, touched on it before. Best game I've seen from him all year. Um, was a really huge factor in that third quarter, getting us back into the game. So shout out to Howie. Uh, two for Crispy um, for the reasons that I uh, highlighted in the pilot caught my eye. I thought he kept our head above water. And yeah, I gave three to Jordan to go. Mm. Need I say more, Lukey? I'll give one to Mason Cox. I uh, thought he was huge and that goal was massive, but just some big marks around the ground. Um, and yeah, going hard in the middle every single time. So massive for us. Two votes, Crispy. We've already touched on it, but fantastic game. And it, it's like he knows we need a bit of run here. We need to get going sometimes, and he's the one to drive that. So um, great game from Crispy and three votes, Geordie. Um, hopefully, best game of his career. Hopefully he has one more in him next week. Thank you, Lukey. One vote I've gone with Nick Dacos. I thought that the way he worked into the match was absolutely incredible for such a young player. Two votes went to Jack Crisp and three to Geordie Degoe, who spent the last oh, however many minutes of the minutes. match. How did that happen? On the pine and still How got best on. So you sound like BT. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> It's, it's a talking point. It's still on the ground, it is, a talk, it is a legitimate talking point. <laughs> it it is, but it makes sense why it happens, that the the play was on the other side for the whole time in that last eight minutes. There was no goals kicked. Um, yeah, and the it wasn't really moving. It was just, you know... Between the arcs. So yeah. you, you, there was never an opportunity for a player to run off because then you, you're one... You're exposed. You're one yeah. down. And once it got to those two, three minutes left... Um, you're not make you, you can't make an interchange unless um, there is a goal scored. So, um, I you couldn't have felt more hard for anyone um, than Geordie in those last two minutes. He's he's played the game of his life, and then he can't try and win Peter it for again. us. And you're watching the footage, and he's biting his nails, and he's like smiling, but it's like a nervous smile. Like he just doesn't know what he can do. And just when he when how the, good is that? When the, yeah, that was that? all of us. Yeah. When the way he ran onto the ground, <laughs> um, and for what he's been through in his career, and at the ultimate lows that he's been at, to then have that moment, and he's almost at the peak of his powers now. Um, it was just, it was lovely for him. And um, it shows how much, like we always talked about Swanee, no one ever thought, did he really care? Was he really that passionate? He was just out there for a laugh. But at the end of the day, he, it meant so much to him uh, playing for Collingwood. And I think that's the same for Geordie. Deep down, there's nothing he cares about more. So it was, yeah, great for him. Uh, pretty simple. I gave one to Tom Mitchell for the reasons I outlined in my part. It caught my eye. I think 24 touches, 10 tackles and... 25 pressure acts had a big say into it towards how we were able to win this game. And same as you boys, two for Crisp and three for Geordie Dugo. It was pretty simple in the end, those top two, and they were both exceptional players. So that's our wrap of the GWS game. we got Ask Pies Nation, so we can talk even more about the GWS game. <laughs> uh, guess the crowd competition, AFLW, and a couple of other things to wrap up this week's episode. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Pies Nation podcast, where the pies are hot. And the drinks are cold. Let's get right into Ask Pies Nation. We'll keep talking about our win over the Giants. So be sure you get involved. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TikTok. We're just flying. Numbers are going through the roof, <laughs> Lukey. So be sure you keep getting involved. And uh, we appreciate all our fans as always as well. So Ask Pies Nation, emotions after the GWS win. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Uh, I'll start with Mitch uh, watching at home, jumping around like a madman, then being sternly, sternly told by my wife, 
you need to calm yourself down. Uh, Steve <laughs> replies to him, some things are worth being in the doghouse. <laughs> yes, <laughs> something like that. Yep. Uh, Neil Appleby, hugging my partner, screaming my face off and disposing of partner's smash bongo drum. It was belted all night, annoying the Carlton neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gold. Uh, Luke Condick, uh, we look back in the second quarter, I was worried we just kept doing the same thing over and over. Again, getting the same result, but then second half came around, we were back to ourselves again. In that third quarter, massive goal from Billy. That fourth quarter, final five minutes, so tense. Mm. Yeah, it was. It was just... Didn't know what was going to happen. You you were sort of waiting for GRB West to yeah. kick a goal mm. and get behind. But yeah, we're the best in the comp at the end. And mm. that's why we're so good. Uh, Connor at a bar in Lombok. Uh, emotions were a bit mixed when the power went out halfway through the oh second quarter. At half time, it still hadn't returned. So I had to get a taxi to a different bar. A dozen or so Pies fans in attendance riding every kick and bump yeah, together. That's mad. Mm. Love that. Love those types of stories. <laughs> David, uh, what a roller coaster Friday night was. I was confident all week, but that confidence was all gone by half time. What an effort to fight back. What a crowd. And how good was the sound when the final siren went off? We are massive. Yeah. It was It was that last 10 seconds, really, before mm. the siren went. That was just... Everyone knew you start hugging and you start like, yep, yeah, we're in. We're the in. scenes when Hoskin Elliott's got the ball yeah. and the crowd are like. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> all the background. Of the, yeah, it's gone. That's so funny. Eddie, I'm like, is he going to listen to him or? Yeah. Uh, ben Tate, 10 minutes ago, I was on the edge of my couch. Four minutes ago, I was pacing the room, couldn't sit down. Hands on knees, staring at the TV. The roar was blooding from, bloody amazing coming through the TV as the final siren went. Absolute mm. scenes. Yeah. Superb. Uh, Matt, Friday night was my first ever a final I've attended live when Will Hoskin and I took that mark and the noise in the moment everyone went up knowing that we bloody made it. It was amazing. I was shaking by the end of it. A surreal experience. Not a bad first final to go to. Oh. <laughs> that's a pretty good one to start. You'll never, you'll never live up to another game nah, like that's that. It. That's the problem. So. Yeah. I was, that's one emotion I had as well. I, like My legs were shaking. Like At the end when you're standing and celebrating, I just couldn't stop shaking. It was um, unbelievable. Uh, Jessica lands down. Love the Collingwood chant, drowning out the GWS theme song at the start. Those li last five minutes were so tense and stressful, but at that, Will Hoskin Elliott Mark, the cheering started and then was the deafening on the siren. My daughter and I were all teary. Absolutely unforgettable atmosphere. It's the biggest cheer Hoskin Elliott will ever get <laughs> getting possession of the game. Of of a ball <laughs> unless unless he does it again a week later <laughs> well he will can i just say he's an absolute favorite of my partner chantelle's yes i know not. she's a big fan and uh we, she's placed a bet about five weeks ago um because we were ripping into her we thought mm, so, it's a, it's fair enough you know not everyone can be your favorite player but sometimes you've just got to celebrate when someone does something good and she's didn't wasn't doing that. So my mate, I think it was Liam, said if we win the flag and he kicks a goal in the grand final, you have to get W H E thirty two oh. tattooed somewhere <laughs> on your ankle or something like that. <laughs> and so, uh, to her credit, I think she's happy to honour it. So hopefully, yeah. Wilbur can kick a goal this week and we can get up. That'd be hilarious. Chop, that chops wouldn't hold her to that. Would <laughs> no, I think it absolutely would. Absolutely would. That's that's funny. Did yes. You notice as well that it was Hoskin and Bobby Hill had the last two touches. Two giants. Two giants. Yeah. So nice little. True. Moment, uh, mm. Captain Noob, I'll never forget the roar at the end of that 10-hour quarter. I jumped up and down, hugged my brother and high-fived some strangers then sung mm. the Collingwood song with only half my voice. It's hard to get much better than that. That's the mm. best part when you just start hugging and high-fiving randoms mm. all around you. You don't, you don't care who it is and what they've done in the last two hours. Just, <laughs> where, just, we're in. Where else are you going to do that? Like, no. Where else are you just going to go up <laughs> to don't. a random bloke and embrace him while he's a family member who you haven't seen for 40 years? Like It's just and, an amazing arena. It's the rest of the night as well. That's all I did all night. Everywhere I went was calling all people everywhere and you just start having massive DMs with people, <laughs> hugging people. You're buying each other drinks and you've never met this person. You don't know what they are, who they are. Um, and it's, it's it's what you get on the interstate trips mostly, I find, is just mm. you run into your own. But it was everywhere on Saturday, oh, Friday night. It was just Collingwood scarves, Guernseys, everywhere. And early hours of Saturday morning. And, yeah, yeah. Mm. Early, it was getting late hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, morning. Uh, Joel Greer, jumping up and down like a damn maniac, hugging my brothers, jumping up and down on my seat, hugging strangers, trying to find what was left of my voice to belt out the song. Yep. And you know, the best part is we all are going through the same thing mm. all together. I, mm. I just love that. Uh, Diane Kerrison screaming and hugging my son in the middle of the sports bar in Hobart. So relieved that we got there and exciting knowing that we've made it to another grand final. Did you say Diane Kerrison? Yep. Related to Shane Kerrison? 1990 Premiership player, maybe? 
Potential. Bit of an omen, I don't know. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I have to <laughs> Just ask her. She's listening. Uh, Deborah Lloyd, on the edge of my seat the whole game, felt very tense when the siren went up on my feet, arms in the air, then hugging my husband, so excited, then singing our theme song with gusto. Mm. Awesome. Uh, Lauren White, I was on the floor practically begging the gods to let it happen, totally at the mercy of my TV. <laughs> Uh, Mark Joseph, I was actually in hospital enjoying time with my wife and my fourth child who was born 75 minutes before the match wow. started. That's great. Oh, what a memory. Well, I'd love to know what the name of that child was, <laughs> on how that went about. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will. <laughs> uh, Jess, Dean, Tafia, Thomas, never doubted him, never do, but I knew that game was going to be stressful going into it. It was a similar feeling to the qualifier between Cat Pies and Cats last season. But this time we won. The moment I realised we were going to a GF, I immediately stopped celebrating. Save it for next week. 28, 2018 felt different, but this this feeling is insane and indescribable. This week cannot go quick enough. Here we go. It's coming home. <laughs> oh, mm. Yes, that's what we like. It might, it might be a dumb question, so bear with me. Do you think it was better that we had such a tight game coming into a grand final compared to one that we go through the motions with, or does it not matter? I have thought about this, and I don't know what history would say in terms of the team that goes through the absolute nail-biter, of course, it was Collingwood, and then the other side. Like Generally speaking, we might have mentioned this on the podcast at some point, but there's one prelim that is just mm. neck and neck, and then there's another one where it's not like a huge margin necessarily, but one team is home before yeah. the last 30 seconds of the game. And how that checks out this week and what that means for our recent... Uh, we've got so much confidence in this space. Mm. This is the thing. So I think a lot of teams over the journey might have taken that and thought, you know, if we need to lock it down, we're the team to do it. But that game against... That Carlton-Brisbane game, I don't know if you boys watched it, but it was like four quarters of footy, absolutely, even though Carlton were mm. out of it for probably the last... Oh, better part of the second half, really, and Nico. How glorious was that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was still there was still um, guys out on their feet mm. all the way to the end. So what I'm trying to say there, but that game was not a walk in the park for them. No, I don't that, believe. Well, they were 30 points down at quarter time. It was That's a word. they were staring yeah. down the barrel of another prelim final defeat. Um, probably yeah, four all almost the commentary four around, to five yeah. years almost wasted. And I was at the point of going, well, they have just blown like a premiership in, not just this year but the last a few a window years. Yeah. Um, because you get to, then you, you just start again next year and there's no guarantees of anything so they they did have to work hard um, obviously it was a different type of game to ours but um, nonetheless I, I think it, fairly similar circumstances coming mm. into this week mm. uh, Amy Ewerson, um started tearing up with three minutes to go I just had absolute faith that we would get over the line Somehow my four-year-old boy fell asleep in my arms despite the noise. Celebrated with family over here in Perth in the lounge room at the final bell. Glad we booked our flights in July sitting in Q51 oh, on Saturday. July. See you there. Is that the, was that the um, yeah. lady we had on yeah. as I oh, uh, guess the crowd? Because yeah. yeah. she mentioned when she came on that she had booked flights yeah. to come over for grand final week. Yeah. And she was very confident. She got, her, got her seat. There you go. Yeah, yeah. As well. Q51. Very confident she was. Uh, how's What's it? Just secret? <laughs> quickly, before I forget, how's this for a story? My sister's a flight attendant and uh, big delays coming from Perth mm. um, to Melbourne uh, the day prior and the day of um, Friday. Um, and the flight she ended up back coming back to Melbourne on, um, they arrived in Melbourne at 8.30 and mm. there were Collingwood supporters on that plane. 8.30 p.m. Yeah, that's rough. Um, and they made the announcement, if you're a footy fan, you can get off first. Well, one lady cracked it. Why do footy fans get to go off? Oh. Well, the game's on right now. <laughs> They're yeah. only here for this reason. <laughs> so I, I don't know if they ended up making it to the game because, you know, you've got to leave the airport, get to the ground. So, oh, yeah. Um, but how stiff is that? That's right. Um, so. The worst nightmare, that stuff. Alpha Sierra Lima, trying to be quiet on the maternity ward with my sleeping 32-hour-old baby next to me. She may have been the newest member of the Magpie yeah, Army beautiful. at that point. That's awesome. uh, Christine Edwards, I didn't even hear the siren sound as it was so loud. I then stood, stood up on the chair and had tears in my eyes. I looked around me and saw so many people crying, just so overwhelmed with emotion. It really shows how much we ride the wave with mm. this team. One more to go. 
Amazing. And that's it. That's yeah. not. We thought, we thought this week was emotional, Nico. Oh. Best believe it'll oh, go oh, up yeah. 10 million gears if we are able to get the job done this week yeah. in the granny. That'd be nuts. Well, that was Ask Pies Nation. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, TikTok. Thank you for getting involved. Hopefully, we've got a big Ask Pies Nation for you next week after we get the job done this Saturday. So, thanks for. I don't know. What, what will it be? How do you, know. ce- how'd you celebrate? Yeah, just, um, <laughs> what time do you get yeah, home? What yeah, day? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Are you still celebrating? <laughs> Um, no, nah, awesome stuff there from our fans as always. Uh, guess the margin, any one pointers? Yeah, uh, George Brett upset yep. pies by one. Nico Childsy pies by one. Oh, Shrimp B Smalls pies by one. Uh, Connor Rational Rambles one. Bring your own defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well. Xander Kuros one point. Guinea sub injuring. Well, he, this didn't happen, but he said Guinea would be subbed in and kick the winning goal. He kicked. A point as soon as he came on, and we won by a point. So Mm. did he Uh kick the match-winning point? Potentially. I was hoping that they were going to bring him on a couple of minutes into the quarter, not at three-quarter time. That's what we needed. As soon as they would have seen him come on, that crowd would have gone on. I was a bit curious why they did that. I don't know if there's Mm. protocols around. Um, Obviously, McStay wasn't coming back. Do they have to actually activate it um, at the point they did? But I was a bit, you know, annoyed because I thought the whole point of Ginevan being the sub was the moment of him coming Mm. on. And then he still got the big cheer, but it was like... Crap, he's on already. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I think it's some fours, that's what we want, but I don't think Craven Crack's too worried about what sort of standing ovation <laughs> he's getting. He just wants he's looking after the X's and O's and nah, he has to come on at three uh, Just a couple more. Wildlings, one point. Uh, Brendan Joyce, one point, and that is it for the margins. All right, perfect. Well, let's get to our guest to crowd competition. Where have we got Yana? We'll find out if that's the best way to, to actually pronounce her name. Was she close? Five off, Oof. I think it was. Yeah. Five off. There was a... F- it's going to be interesting guess the crowd uh, the grand, grand final, final because that's very true. we're going to be it will be at capacity you'd say so but will it be exactly will it be exact everyone's just going to guess 100,024 <laughs> <laughs> will we have our first exact um, yeah that could we be might the way we do it 50 of them <laughs> <laughs> well let's give Yana a call and we'll see what she's got to say after our big Friday night win hello hello is this Yana is that the correct way to say it yep Yana's good Perfect, perfect. Welcome to the Pies Nation podcast. I'm Thanks. just going to put you on my in my ear so oh, I can okay. hear you properly. No worries, no worries. We can, we can we, manage. We got, we're all here all night, all night. No worries. No, very good. Okay. There we go. Got you. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Well, yeah. welcome to the Pies Nation podcast. Thank you for being part of it and congratulations on being our guest of crowd competition winner for another week. <laughs> um, how did you find, how'd you find Friday night? Are you still celebrating? Um, yeah, look, it was, um, it was, normally I'm very nervous at our games, all of them, but I wasn't on Friday. Um, but actually, to tell you the truth, the last three or four minutes, I thought we were behind by one because I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't see the, um, the score thing, the board. Uh, I am 70, so, you know. Well, Yana, well, well done on getting along on Friday night. It was um, a great one, that's for sure. Looking forward to next week and as long-suffering Collingwood supporters, we know that grand final day doesn't always go our way. Do you feel there's a different aura about the side at the moment? Do, do you feel this is a, a different way um, that we're going to do it under Craig McRae? How do you feel about next week? I think that we're going to win. Now, I, I don't like to crow, but I have a feeling we're going to be able to beat them at their game because... Um, Craig has shown that he can change how we play with every different team. And mind you, we lost the two games against them this year, but I think I think we're going to do it. The only thing I'm worried about is um, next day. Mm-hmm. Mind well, I, I've never really considered him much. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Well, <laughs> someone here said night. that only a couple of months ago, but anyway. Um, so. Uh, look, they'll just have to change the back up a bit. That's all. Luke? Hello, anyway. 
Great to have you on, Yana. Uh, congratulations you. on your win. It's Luke uh, speaking now. Do uh, I win? Do I win free tickets? <laughs> well, if, <laughs> if you have any, um, <laughs> send them there. We, no, I got, I got mine. I'm oh, a legend. No. Well, Smith congratulations Knight. on getting your tickets. Some of us aren't so lucky. Yeah, so. you got any spares? Really? You didn't get tickets? No, uh, we're still waiting. A few of us working we, on it. Yeah, we got it. Oh, yeah. what a shame! Yeah, no, Sophia? I'm a legends member. Oh. And I was very lucky, even before the kerfuffle, mm. Mm. I got um, uh, level N oh. and D. Yeah, yeah. I'm a home and away member, Legends member. So I'm used to sitting up there. And I really mm. didn't want to get up in queue because, you know, <laughs> a bit, yeah, out of the way. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. I don't know how I picked the number, but I did. Can I? So, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you. Was there any science behind your your guess the no, crowd, or was it just pure guesswork? Only because I knew we would have more than Carlton. All right, that's what I was <laughs> banking on as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I don't know. I just went ninety-seven, six hundred. <laughs> uh, let's do sixty, and I did. That's it. I love it. <laughs> I've never won anything before, so <laughs> you've got to give me something, oh. boys. Well, Yana, you get to you, chat with you, us. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it's, it's Marcus here, Yana, and you are on you are on the uh, the pod in Grand Final week. Is this your first time on a podcast? Yes. There you go. What a week this is <laughs> turning out to be. <laughs> Who would ask a seventy-year-old to be on a podcast? Well, look, <laughs> sometimes there's competitions that make anything possible. So we're glad that we Good. could um excellent have Thank you here you so on debut. Much. We do not discriminate. But look, I would <laughs> love to ask. I would love to ask a little bit about your Collingwood story and how you came okay. to support the Pies and perhaps some uh, unique experiences as a fan over your tenure as a mad Collingwood legend? So I didn't follow football as a kid because I'm, I'm Greek and so I came here when I was seven. The teach, our first teacher in primary school changed our names. So I'm Yana, but they actually gave me the name Jenny. So I've been called Jenny all my life here. Ah. Anyway, and then um, she, they asked us what football team do we want to follow? So two siblings went Geelong, the other two went Essendon. And because I'm the middle child, mm. I'm always different, mm -hmm. black sheep, um, I like the black and white stripes. Mm -hmm. So Greek child, uh, marry the Greek first time round, I followed soccer. And then second time round, divorced to another Englishman. Um, I decided all of a sudden to uh, follow football and my niece, who was 16 and wanted to go, asked if I would join with her. So mm -hmm. I joined at the age of 53, I think. It was 2003. That was my first oh, game. Ah, wow. Okay. And uh, I've just followed very quietly, done my own thing, on my own, every week. Just, I've, and I've loved it. Absolutely loved it. Wow. And I recommend it to any single elderly woman. <laughs> yeah, that is our audience. That is for sure. Um, is it? <laughs> so that's great. Oh, um, dear. Yeah. So nothing specific other than I'm really quite shy. Um, however, a couple of weeks ago, I walked into Oh My, the coffee shop in Swan Street. Okay. From just um, finished my Pilates session. And there they were, the boys. Wow. So, uh, yeah, um, Bruzzy, uh, they were all there. And I think they may have been consoling um, John. Anyway, I walked up and uh, asked them for a photo. They were very happy because they weren't in, um, in uniform. They were in civvies. And... Um, Anyway, Bruzzy said, okay, let's do it. Let's take a photo. And then I, like an idiot, pinch him on the cheek like an old <laughs> Greek grandma. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he would have loved that. He's a big teddy bear himself. <laughs> yeah, no, he, might have, he, might, he might have loved anyway, it, I reckon. I went and sat down to have my coffee and brekkie. And then I'm telling my grandson, who's in Sydney, and broke his uh, leg, fib and tib, um, playing NRL. 
a big kid fell on him and he broke his leg. Mm. So my grandson says, do you think you could go back and ask Bruzzy if he can say something on camera for me? (laughs) And I'm thinking, I've already embarrassed myself so badly. Should I? Shouldn't I? And what do you do for your grandson? You've got to do it. You've got to do it. Good great grandma, you've got to do it. So off I went and he did it for me. Mind you, still Sidebottom looked at Sidebottom looked at me and he said, "Do you think you could do this after we've have our, have, we've had our breakfast?" Oh, no. <laughs> Steel was hungry. Steel was ready. <laughs> and but Brazzy said, "No, I'll do it now. Come on, give me your phone." Oh, so that's man. my that's my first experience with the boys. That's a, that was unique. That's a pretty good experience. That was unique. That is a very impressive. Not at the game, Yana, no, but you, you've that, taken that is it in a, that is a different a direction and on this podcast. New story. And, very, um, very well done. Yeah. Well, Cute. So I can send you the photo if you want. <laughs> oh, Mail it in. We'd love oh, to see it. We'd chuck it in. That'd be great. Do, where do I put it? <laughs> send them to Pies Nation on Instagram. Uh, oh, okay. And I'm happy to reshare them for you as well. Okay, good man. There anyway, go. I've enjoyed. Thank you. Perfect. No, Jan, it's been great to have you on the podcast. We really appreciate it. And hopefully we're all celebrating big time in a week's time. Go, Go pies. pies. Go Pies. Good Thank you yeah. very much. I'm Thank you. I'm watching, uh, waiting for Brownlow, for Nick to be called out. Yes. <laughs> no, that's what we're all hoping he's, for he's too. Winning, he's winning it, yeah? I think so. Yes. That's what they're saying. Yes. I mean, he missed three weeks, but in those three weeks, how bad were the other dudes? <laughs> <laughs> Horrible, yeah. yeah that's yeah. why. That's, <laughs> he's got them home. They, weren't that, they no. weren't that great, were they? No. no. They, they, no. they didn't make the maybe, most of it, I don't think. No. no, maybe the Bont got one, but I don't know. No, anyway. We'll see how it goes. No, thank you, Yana. Really thank appreciate you. it. Cheers. Go Pies. Blessings. Go Pies. <laughs> Go Pies. <laughs> And there we go. That was Yana joining us as part of the Pies Nation podcast. It's a great little segment there. Of I course, think she's we moved love. her way to number one. Oh, on right the up there. All time uh, guest leaderboard. Brazzy's listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are the moments that count as a footy player. You want to do the right thing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> cameras aren't rolling. Oh, so that's gold. On your Bruzz. Well, if that wants to be you on grand final week. If you can guess the grand final crowd correctly, well, that could be you. So make sure you keep an eye out for Lukey's game day yeah, post. Um, it's going to be you... interesting. If it ends up being a capacity and <laughs> could we have about everyone, 50 people and everyone gets gonna... the capacity, then uh, mm, yeah, I think it's work something out. <laughs> uh, well, that, that means we're going, so that'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that could be you. So make sure you keep an eye out for Luke's game day post. If you get closest to the pin or even on it, you'll be joining us next week, hopefully in a nice big celebratory mood so there we go that was a really good one from mm. Yana very impressive um, not as impressive was the AFLW unfortunately going down to St Kilda who hadn't won a game leading up to that match and for three quarter time we had a, a pretty comfortable lead in the end it was 20 points we were up at three quarter time didn't kick a score for the last term Saints kicked five goals too and they uh, unfortunately we went down to them by the Thir- 12 points, sorry, there's my math. 12 points in the end um, at RSEA Park. So, mm. unfortunately, in a 10-game season, these losses are uh, pretty significant. And to be 1-3 and three after 4 is not a great sign. Um, Britt Benici was a standout. Even Sabrina Frederick wasn't too bad in either. But, uh, yeah, a bit disappointing, Lukey. Yeah, pretty disastrous, I guess, um, from a season perspective, um, to be up by 20 points against one of, you said, it was their first win. Um in the competition and uh, yeah, we're in a position where we can kind of sort of set our season up and get rolling. And now all of a sudden we're chasing tail big time mm-hmm. one and three and um, we're definitely going to have to win the next one. Um, but yeah, incredibly disappointing uh, and to give up five goals as well in the quarter. Um, yeah, not great is it? When you're up by 20. Um, so it ends up being a comfortable win for the Saints. So yeah, a lot of work to be put in, and uh, they do play on Grand Final Day as well. Yes, on Saturday. So Punt Road Oval against they will the move Bombers from the AIA Centre. Um, yes, mm-hmm. playing 11 a.m. So if you are um, wanting a bit of a prelude to the Grand Final, then mm. the AFLW is right there. Not a bad way to do so. it, that's for sure. So yeah, Punt Road 11 o'clock, as you said, Luki against the Bombers. Hopefully, we can get back on the, the winning column as well. Mm-hmm. So should be a great one. And beat the Bombers once again. That'd be nice. Yeah, exactly mm-hmm. right. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to uh, this. Is now Jack's. Uh, specific a special requ- requested segment here from Jack after the wonders of the tickets for the AFL Grand Final over the last couple of days. Now, the three of us here don't have any at the moment, as you would have heard from our call. So if anyone knows anyone has a few, that'd be great. Um, just slide them our way. But Jack, what did you have about Ticket Tech? 
So I think it's blown up a little bit over social media. Always does this time of year, especially when there's a Melbourne club participating around the allocation of grand final tickets and, and the ballot. But um, to put it simply, I think um, I'm a Legends member and a part of the Legends membership is that you're guaranteed a, a grand final ticket as if you tick the right steps and register for the ballot ballot appropriately. And what was happening, I think, on Saturday night at the conclusion of the Carlton-Brisbane game was that um, a lot of members, actually, there was about 37 members missed out on having money taken out of their account. Um, there's 700 of them that um, had sufficient funds but couldn't be processed for some reason, so that had to be sorted today. I th- and there's a lot of people blowing up. I'm not one of them. I, I got I got given standing room, so myself, my partner, and um, two other people um, got given standing room, and none of us care, really. We'd happily stand on the roof and, and, <laughs> and watch. We just want to be there um but a lot of people are blowing up at the fact that um these category or um how would you say priority Priority one one, members members um are missing out and then you're hearing stories of category the priority two and priority three members getting you know seats on level two with five of their mates so it's yeah a bit of a um a horror show again i got standing room i got an email today as a lot of people would have um saying that any P1 members that got standing room will be upgraded to a seat. But it's just so stressful. Like I finally today got my standing room tickets confirmed. And I, I've, I'll be honest, like it really has stressed me out a lot this year. And I, <laughs> it like, cause I, it's a big reason why I buy the, buy the membership to have mm. this access come. I mean, obviously you hope that we're there every year, but it's a massive bonus when we mm. do make it. And, um, yeah, I was, oh, I've slept bugger all since Saturday <laughs> night because I've been so, so stressed about securing these tickets. And now I've got to wait again um, to find out you know, where we're going to be sitting, if we're going to be sitting all together mm. and, and what that looks like. So a lot of blame from Collingwood on Ticket Tech towards Ticket Tech, a lot of blame from Ticket towards Collingwood, mm. and then a lot of blame from Collingwood and Ticket Tech towards mm. the AFL. So mm. it's, a, it's really disappointing. And it was spoken about in the radio a lot today. And I think it clearly needs to be revisited. It's so, I know it's a massive cash cow for the AFL and they can take so much advantage of all the clubs on grand final day and, and really, um, yeah, get a big cash injection. But 17,000 seats per club is just not enough for the members. Nope. And, you know, Brisbane, uh, in comparison, they're an interstate side. That's not enough seats for them either. Mm. Like, it's, it's, there is so many people that are missing out here. So many people that go week in, week out, like the, the people that are in this room right now, mm. that deserve a seat that aren't getting it um, mm. because of the way it's, it's run. So, yeah, they need to look at it and they do need to look at how they run the ballot as well yeah. because that's been an absolute Bust. part of my language. Yeah. It's been a shit show the last. <laughs> last three days and I've suffered mentally <laughs> from it big time just, just um, to clarify what segment was this was this a it's the one that's on your shirt right t- now a <laughs> yeah. that's a ticket tech that's our best tarant for the year that's it 100% um, it's just so frustrating nah, you're right it's horrible isn't it it's just annoying because and they've got there has to be I think Andy Ma mentioned it today it's about the only thing I've agreed with the bloke all year he said he, there has to be some sort of process where members who go every week who buy either buy tickets through their card or scan who their membership up. barcode, who mm. show up week in, week out, get rewarded somehow. Loyalty yeah. system. Come, come, the end, sure. come the end of the year. Because I've there's just... people that there's people that would be going this week that uh, just because they've got a bit more cash in the back pocket wouldn't have been to a game all year. Mm. And they, they there's no way known they will appreciate it as much as some other people. And that's my only issue with... I understand most Legends members are genuine. You know, yeah. Genuine, they're there most weeks. Um, but it's, yeah, that's the only thing. It's it, just because yeah, you're paying the higher membership doesn't always necessarily mean you're any bigger supporter or better supporter no. than um, the priority two and priority threes. And that's why I, I didn't like the tone of just a few comments and I agree. posts um, yeah. from s- certain um, people looking down upon the lucky ones in priority two and three that did end up getting a ticket. It's not their fault. They just entered the ballot. Um, and most of them have been to every single game this year and mm. have been to every single game for the last, you know, however many years they've been following the pies. So I think, yeah, it, it, I, I don't know, I have any kind of fix for it um, other than, yeah, there needs to be more tickets allocated to club members. Um, but yeah, we've known this forever. Grand final yeah. isn't about the supporters. It's about corporates. Um, the corporates. And that's why prelim is the best night or day of footy for the year for the mm. fans. And we got to enjoy the best of that on Friday. Mm. Um, hopefully 
we all end up there on Saturday, but in any case, hopefully we all end up celebrating together. Yeah, the um, beer's not going to taste any different. No nope. matter who's, We all end up celebrating there? together after we win. After the game. Um, so, yeah, that's what it's about. I, I, it's sort of put a dampener on, uh, I guess, the mm. start to the week. Um, it's, it's just disappointing, Luke, as you said, to, for those people who are complaining about the tickets that they've got at a grand final. Like, I, I know, I get these people pay extra for their memberships and they feel this sense of entitlement. They're quick to forget also. I'm a Legends member, right? You get a home bay on level two or level three at the MCG, which is just about as good seating as mm. you're going to get anywhere. Yep. You get an away seat at the MCG. You get a home and away seat at, Mar- yep. at Marvel Stadium. Do you get... Uh, you? You get Pretty your money's perch, worth throughout yeah. the year. And mm. come the end of the finals, yes, I get that we're priority one. And, and yes, it's stiff that we're, some of us are standing. But just be grateful you're there. Like, mm. I am so, mm. I'm so happy. I am still stressing because <laughs> it's been such a horrid show that I'm worried that something might go wrong and I might lose my standing room tickets even. But just, yeah, for those who have got tickets and are complaining about being on level four when there's some members getting on level one and blah, 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 just really just enjoy mm. being there because there's hundreds of thousands of people around the country that would, you know, kill to be in your position. Yeah, and it's not just the grand final the way it's been a bit annoying, the complaining, but even the throughout the final series, oh, I, I sit there <laughs> throughout the home and away. Why am I sitting there now? Well, you know. Yeah. Just, just be happy you're there, um, and yeah, grand final. If you if you got a ticket, just enjoy wherever you're sitting or standing, mm. um, and yeah, because it's not worth complaining about no. s- different angles and you're lower or you're higher. Mm. Like you're there, exactly right. You're there. So in summary, if anyone has tickets, anyone <laughs> at all, happy to have them taken off your hands. So let us know. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how we go. Dog fight out well, there. Let's Nick see how we go. <laughs> um, all right. Before we wrap up this episode, as I said, a reminder: we're going to have a Thursday app previewing the grand final in full detail, selection, what Brisbane will bring to the table, hopefully, what we can do to get on top and win this grand final. Um, Brownlow tonight. Just before we about to wrap up, it's about to get underway. Nick Dacos, obviously one of the favourites to take out the award. Do you, do you reckon he'll get it, boys? Do you reckon he'll win the Brownlow this year? Oh, I hope that he does for all of the reasons we've talked about him more than any other player on this podcast this season. And he's mm. had an absolute blinder, but I think if he wins, it's a tie. I really yeah. do. I okay. think it's, um, yeah, I've got a bloke named Marcus Bontempelli who might go very, very yeah. close towards the end of the season. Yeah. I'm worried he's yeah tying or just one game, short. one game short. Um, I'm hoping he just polls enough early going i reckon that middle patch of the year even when he was playing and we he kind of dropped out of our votes as well yeah, even though yeah. still playing very well and then he come back a bit again um went to another level so yeah. he yeah it, it'll be interesting how the umpires give him votes because he got to that level so quickly yeah. where it was like if he's not having 35 40 is he in the best players on the ground yeah, when he's yeah. still you know Tough. actually should be getting the votes so hope he wins it but at the end of the day he's got bigger fish to fry on saturday <laughs> so yeah, fingers crossed for him, Nico, but we've got to remind ourselves he is in his second year of AFL yeah. footy. I'm sure we're going to be having these conversations um, for cool. plenty of years to come. Can't have him win come, 10 Brownlows. Yeah. <laughs> come, no, that's it. <laughs> come Monday. But uh, I think also just on potential winners apart from Nick, obviously I hope he will get it. I tend to agree with Marcus. If he does, I think he shares it with one or two other people. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on Zach Butters a little bit. Um, he won the um, AFL Players mm. MVP, mm. I believe. As voted by his peers. And mm. also, I feel like, uh, having win that five a couple of years ago when he won his second one, I feel like we forget about players who have already won it. Lockie Neal has put together a sensational so year. Um, yeah, True. so consistent right throughout the year. So he's going to poll in a lot of games. Um, so he shouldn't be forgotten about also. I think also. AFL put up. That's the yeah, prediction. Yeah, their prediction, yeah. And uh, Lockie Neal, is. Neal wins yeah, it on okay. 32, I think it was. So, yeah. yeah. Who's one unique Collingwood player you feel like can poll a vote? Tonight, Oleg. I reckon Brody Mychik's a good chance for his game against Sydney. The five. What about Oleg? Oleg. You reckon has he, he polled a Brownlow in? vote? Has Oleg? Oh, oh, I can't say for sure that he has. Oh, I'd be very surprised if so. he polls a vote tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we all drink. <laughs> Anyone? Any unique names? Any surprise? Like a Quainer? Do you reckon he can poll a vote? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. 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 He'll Jimmy poll. Howe. Um, no, he's not polled. Johnny a Noble's going to poll early in the year. I reckon. Okay. He put together. A there's a, f- There's a few of, games where he was, yeah. yeah um, just true. one or two, maybe. No, that's fair. How many votes does Pendles Yeah, he's get He always tonight? gets stitched up, I feel. He does. Like he probably yeah. gets, like, no votes. So you, you're going to look back on his career and everyone's going to think he'll have the most votes of anyone who hasn't won a brand low, but he just never... No, he's never, never right up there, is he? Mm. No, that's true. Too old for votes. <laughs> <laughs> what about one that 
should get a lot of votes that you think could sort of who will be the second in Collingwood's team? Oh. Uh, it has to be Dagoe, I think. Could it could be, yeah. Well, you you probably think so purely from a midfielder point of view. I think he yeah. racks up a few threes. Taylor Adams seems to get a few, mm. but will you've got enough? Tom Mitchell might, you know, mm. Darcy get a Moore. few. Defenders very hard. Mm. Don't get votes often, do they? He might get a few early, but nah, nah I don't think I don't he'll know. get enough to get into second for us. Who knows? Jamie yeah. Elliott. Jamie Elliott, it's, yeah. It is going to be an, an exciting watch for Collingwood fans because it has been such a good year where we are going to poll in most games. Yeah, uh, like 100%. You, go, you go some years and we've experienced it where we've lost most games. and There's only four players that yeah, are going to get Yeah, we're not getting votes. any votes. So at least tonight, That's whether true. Nick goes on and wins it, um, Collingwood players should be polling for most mm. of the night. So it will be, and you get the highlights of every game. I love that about it. So it'll yeah. be nice to watch back and reflect and True. prepare for the week ahead. All right. Well, that's going to do for today's episode. Thursday nights, be sure to keep an eye out. We're going to have some great content for you in the lead up to selection and a big grand final preview for Brisbane. So until Thursday, boys, thanks for stopping by and hopefully we can have a nice, easy week and that eventually we're all there on Saturday. Nice, deep win for yes. the podcast. Yes. Always one of our longest ever, I reckon. Thank <laughs> that, you, Yana. That and was right up and there. <laughs> Where's the celebrations at if we win on Saturday? Wow, well, all right. <laughs> not talking about it, Lukey. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't done it. So. <laughs> well, anyway. until Thursday then, I've been your host, Nicholas Sacco. You've been listening or watching to the Pies Nation podcast where the pies are hot and the drinks are cold. <laughs>